Former Labour Foreign Secretary Dame Margaret Beckett has not held back in her criticism of President-elect Donald Trump. Uh, let's speak to her now in uh, Derby. Good uh, morning to you, uh, afternoon in your case. Uh, what's your feeling today now that, that the news has sunk in? Well, I'm a mixture of horrified and terrified. I suppose the horror is for today and the terror is for tomorrow. And why do you say that? What are your specific worries and concerns? I think primarily at this stage, uh, and let's be quite blunt about it, by tomorrow everybody will be seeing the good in Donald Trump because he's been elected. But today, let's just tell the truth. This is a vile and horrible man who has fought a vile and horrible campaign. I'm not just talking about the way he treated Hillary Clinton. Look at the way he treated his opponents in the Republican primaries. He insulted them, he sneered at them, he told lies about them, he insulted their families. This is a horrible man. Now, let's hope he was pretending. And in reality, he's this nice, sweet person I'm sure we'll all be hearing about in the next few days. Do you not take any comfort from his uh, speech, very reconciliatory speech? He was calling on wounds to be healed, to the divide, to be... Uh, brought together different sides, different factions that actually he may have caused through, throughout the campaign, but he was calling for a united America. Does that not give you any confidence about the direction that he wishes to travel in? I go so far as to say that I'm glad he said that, but given how much he did to create and exacerbate and use those divisions, no, it doesn't give me any confidence at all. He has a mandate, a clear mandate now, and he, he spoke to Indeed. very many people, very many people who perhaps previously thought they weren't listened to. Uh, what they voted against is the establishment. They voted for him because he could provide something that hadn't been provided before. They wanted change, and he has, well, he says he will bring about that change. Well, I'd say two things. First of all, we're already seeing in what Paul Ryan said just now, a rewriting of history. It isn't that only Donald Trump heard what the people were concerned about and feared. It's that Donald Trump was prepared to lie in his teeth and tell them it was easy to solve those problems and he could do it and he would do it. And what I said about you know being terrified tomorrow, I think one of the things that really worries me is that we've seen in our own country being a business person doesn't automatically make you successful in politics. He's used to people doing what he tells them when he tells them, because that's what happens in the business world when you are the boss. Politics isn't like that. He isn't going to be able to just walk into the White House and tell the world to change, and the world will change. And what happens if he can't actually carry out all those sweeping promises he's made? Where do the American people turn then? What's the reaction then? That's what's really worrying. Do you not think, though, that he will be a strong leader because of his experience in business and he's used to making things happen? No. Frankly, I don't. I've seen a, a lot of bluster, a lot of bombast, a lot of unpleasantness. He has appealed to the worst in everybody's nature and brought it out and encouraged it. This is a man who, when somebody heckled him at a rally, called on his supporters to beat him up. He's called for Hillary Clinton to have her security guard taken away. He even insinuated that people who didn't agree with her about gun control perhaps should think about shooting her. What kind of a man is that? That was on the campaign trail. Are we likely to see a transition? Oh, so now that's that... all right. No, I'm just saying, are we likely to see a transition now that, that he is to be the leader of the free world? That was... A... A lot of rhetoric, perhaps, yeah. it was part of the campaign, part of the, the showmanship. But now that he is president-elect, will we see a different Donald Trump? I don't know. And I, and I don't know whether that's almost more disgusting. Because if he isn't really like that, and he was just using it to get votes, all that screaming about lock her up and all that kind of thing, if he didn't really mean it, he was even lying to the people who did support him. And if he did mean it, then he's going to have to have a complete character change. And that doesn't happen very often late in life. 
We are in the age of the celebrity, like it or not. Uh, and perhaps a, a lot of his votes mm -hmm. came from people who were fans of his because of his reality TV show. Um, do you think if a candidate such as Donald Trump were to stand in the UK that he would make any headway whatsoever? I think anybody who said no after today would be crazy. Anything can happen in this post-truth world. And the consequences we have yet to see. But they may not be good. You describe it as a post-truth world. Uh, when do you think we, we entered this environment? I think it's been coming on gradually. One of the things that people have been noticing and writing about increasingly is, that, and this may particularly be true in the United States, perhaps more than in a country like this, but it's possible to get through life listening only to the news channel that tells you something you already agree with, reading only a newspaper that says something you already agree with, hardly ever mixing with people. That, that I think, is how you got the delusion last time that Mitt Romney had beaten Barack Obama because the people who supported him were talking only to each other and people like them. And you can go through life like that, but it's certainly the thing it does not produce is a united people or a united country. And it can be, you know, the ultimate in being divisive. And that, I think, is a real difficulty. Historically, in every country, it was thought that if you showed people factual evidence, then that would make a difference to their view. Today, people have their own facts. Dame Margaret Beckett, thank you for uh, speaking to us. Uh, that's exactly what the president-elect wants to do to uh, unite America. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're due to... Uh